This is ABC 15 Mornings. A federal judge blocking vaccine mandates. Including federal contractors, that similar measures will protect their workforce, protect their customers, and protect our communities. The ruling putting a Phoenix requirement on hold. Opening statements begin today. That chest cam footage is extremely disturbing, but it is her best defense. A former police officer will stand trial for manslaughter. We're all paying more. They lost a lot of money in the past year or two years. They have to recuperate that. So that's probably one of the drivers for these increased prices. But are companies using inflation to take advantage of you? Ever stumble while speaking this morning? Look at the most commonly mispronounced words. Oh man, I could make my own list. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so true for both of us. I think we all feel that way. But I think when we can laugh at ourselves about it, it's all right. Espresso, that's one. Espresso. Oh. I have members of my family who say espresso. <laughs> potato, <laughs> potato. Yes. Right. Hey, Keely O'Kelly here alongside Nick Saletti. We're off and running here to a great start on this Wednesday. Yeah, okay, you might need something caffeinated, espresso or something like that. <laughs> Warm, preferably, meteorologist Jorge Torres joining us right now with a quick look at that most accurate forecast. A little chillier than we might be used to. Jorge. Yeah, we've been talking about a pretty warm start to fall and winter. In fact, last week, the first week of December, was the warmest on record for Phoenix. We'll get to those numbers in a moment, but it will finally feel a little more like fall and winter here over the next few days as cold air moves in. Right now, we're tracking a lot of cloud cover and a few light showers, even some light snow trying to be picked up there on Desert Doppler just to the west of Flagstaff. Just a few flurries this morning uh, along the 40 and as you head to the west of the valley out in western Maricopa County, some very, very light shower activity moving to the northeast, just west of you folks uh, in Wickenburg. Right now in the Phoenix Metro, temperatures generally in the 40s and 50s and we are anticipating those highs to reach the 70s later on today, but it will feel a little more like winter later this week with cooler temperatures, rain and snow in the high country. So we'll talk more about that coming up in your most accurate forecast. But first, check out those morning roads with no Holly Graf filling in for Megan Thompson. Good morning, Ohe. Hey, good morning. My word is especially. I hate that one. It's those ES words, apparently. I hear that it's actually more of a like a Florida thing when people do that. I don't know. I'm just saying. <laughs> I will tell you that it's an especially smooth ride this morning. We've got mostly green across the valley. We're seeing those typical slowdowns right as you hit uh, the 50th Avenues over in the West Valley and coming down the 17 this morning right around Indian School is where you'll start to see a little bit of a slowdown, but we're not really hitting the brakes just yet. Just higher traffic volume looking great across the North Valley this morning, though East Valley for the most part is doing OK, although we do have a crash on the US 60 going westbound. This is right near Arizona Avenue Country Club Road area, and then I just wanted to give you a quick live update. They have officially cleared a dot moving and just the last little bit of debris there, so we will look at the rest of those drive times coming up in just a little bit. Nick at 602, a lot of news to get to this. Just in Pfizer says a booster shot of its COVID vaccine may protect against a new Omicron variant. The company says recent lab tests show a third dose increased by 25 fold the level of antibodies. Pfizer's already working on an Omicron specific vaccine that would be ready this spring if it is needed. This comes as new data shows Omicron could be less severe than the Delta variant. The World Health Organization saying it's almost certain of this. Health officials say while it's highly transmissible, it looks like it leads to less severe symptoms. And we must remember these are still in the form of anecdotal, but hopefully in the next few weeks we'll get a much clearer picture. But it appears that with the cases that are seen, we are not seeing a very severe profile of disease. The Omicron variant now confirmed in at least 20 states. Arizona is still not one of them. Well, it is the Delta variant driving the recent surge in COVID cases across this country. And the CDC reports about 1,100 people are dying every day. Those numbers are up more than 50% from just last week. And the death toll does continue to rise here in Arizona. We are now averaging 64 lives lost daily. And that is the highest number that we have seen since March 1st. As for cases, our average is up 30% compared to the week of Thanksgiving. 67% of Arizonans eligible for a vaccine have received one. And the debate over vaccine mandates is not ending anytime soon. A federal judge issuing an injunction against a mandate for federal contractors. So let's bring in our Jamie Warren, who's live for us right now. Uh, Jamie, this is a decision that now affects the city of Phoenix employees. 
Nick and Kaylee, it was an issue debated here at last night's city council meeting, and now this fight is going to face even more legal challenges with our state's attorney general filing a lawsuit against it. It was just 24 hours ago that the city of Phoenix had this vaccine requirement in place for all employees. They had to be vaccinated by the middle of January, but that is now on hold after a federal court ruling that came down yesterday. The city's decision came less than an hour before the city council was scheduled to discuss the issue. However, council did still meet and took over an hour of public comment, and as expected, they remain very divided. Ongoing squabble over simple public health measures, whether it be masking or vaccines, is tone deaf and insensitive at best. So this is a reasonable ask that I uh, strongly urge the city to support and move ahead with. So I strongly oppose any sort of mandate going forward, no matter what happens in the court systems. And I highly recommend that you table this for the foreseeable future. And it was also brought up during that meeting that Tucson has implemented a vaccine mandate for city employees, but its city council made that decision on their own, whereas the city of Phoenix City Council said that they were making that decision based off of that federal contractor mandate. So obviously a lot of opinions on this one. We are going to keep tabs on it as the story develops. For now, reporting live in Phoenix, Jamie Warren, ABC 15, Arizona. Every parent knows that remote learning can be a challenge. You've lived it, but it doesn't only affect K through 12 students. This morning, we have new research showing online learning is having the opposite effects at the college level. Amelia Fabiano live this morning with data you will only see on ABC 15 morning. So break it down for us, Amelia. What's it telling us? So Nick, a company called Instructure did this study. They make the app Canvas. It's an online platform that a lot of universities like ASU use to connect students with their professors. They can submit assignments on there. They can even take tests on there right from the palm of their hand or their laptop. So what they're finding is that demand is skyrocketing for online classes or hybrid classes. That's what schools are asking them to help them with, even as in-person learning resumes. So Really, gone are the days of those 300 person lecture halls we all think of, right, where one professor could barely engage with a lot of their students. Some of those larger courses now may find more benefit in shifting to online or hybrid learning to have more engagement with students, especially where, you know, this current generation of college students and really every generation after them is so native to the digital world. Colleges and universities across the country have been using companies like Instructure to try and help them fine tune online learning with more intentionally designed programs. It's a demand that experts say didn't really exist pre pandemic. I think before COVID online learning was somehow viewed as less than right. It was it was not considered on par with in person education and just like working from home right now, you know, we've all proven we can be productive working from home. Students have realized that we can be productive and we can really uh, you know, achieve our academic goals with online learning. Yeah, good to have options, right? But of course, it is still good to have that in-person experience in some cases. But that expert tells me even with in-person, they should really be coupling that experience with more advanced technology options to really connect those students better together. Nick, it's going to be really interesting to see what this company finds over the course of the next year in their study as well. Especially with the convenience factor, I'm getting my master's right now. All my classes are online and I can't tell you what a difference it makes with working and, and yeah. everything else right we're all so busy so i mean just the convenience factor too interesting stuff though i'm sure more to come from that amelia fabiano live for us this morning well, after nearly two years of virtual events the scottsdale museum of contemporary art is going to welcome back guests this week mystery in the museum returns friday visitors have the chance to try to crack codes and riddles to break a curse there's also going to be some hybrid events that people can participate in virtually Boy, a massive fire. Look at this. This is a junkyard in Phoenix. Maybe you saw that plume of smoke from miles away. Our Cliff Castle chopper over that scene near 27th Avenue and Buckeye. Lines of cars charred. Dozens of firefighters working together to fight the flames. In fact, we caught up with one guy who works across the street who says he is thankful for their efforts. You can see the flames all the way to the sky. That was scary. I never see a fire 
that close. We were afraid that they were going to come this way and start burning everything. And that fire burning hot, clearly. Phoenix Fire telling us they use hundreds of gallons of water a minute to put this thing out. There's no word yet on a possible cause. 609 and good news for gamers. Next on ABC 15 Mornings, you can now play video games in a Tesla when the car is in motion. Mm. We're going to explain this one because okay. I know it's bringing up some safety concerns. And the eyebrows go up too, right? Then this, elves on the shelf. Snow for the kids and Santa, I know him. Some great holiday fun landing on your Wednesday morning bulletin board. Plus education goes before the Supreme Court. Justice is about to hear a case that could expand school vouchers in Arizona and across the country. Plus the ABC 15 live drive is on the move this morning in Chandler heading southbound on the 101. Looks pretty good. The opposite direction might have more traffic for you though. I'll show you the other spots that are starting to get clogged with those desert drive times. Welcome back. Let's get to your morning headlines. One time chief of staff to former President Donald Trump expected to set uh, be out on a scheduled deposition with the January 6th committee today. Uh, the panel says it's going to pursue criminal contempt charges if Mark Meadows does not show up. The committee recently subpoenaed phone records from more than 100 people, including Meadows. Opening statements begin today in the trial of former Minnesota police officer Kim Potter. She's facing manslaughter charges for shooting Dante Wright during a traffic stop. Potter claims she meant to fire off her taser instead. A bill that authorizes more than $700 billion in defense funding heads to the Senate. The measure also contains changes to how sexual assault and harassment are handled within the military. Tesla drivers can now play video games while their car is in motion. Before, games could only be accessed if a Tesla was in park. Users have to press a button saying they are the passenger, though, just to certify that you're not uh, driving, kind of shifting lanes. Right, and then, or distracted. You know, trying to rescue uh, Princess Toadstool at the same time. <laughs> I'm just glad you clarified, okay? Hey, a Valley veteran reflecting on Pearl Harbor and the attack. 80 years later, Jack Holder is 99 now, and he tells us he remembers everything about that day. It's always nice to come back. I enjoy it. Uh, uh, it brings back some of the horrors, of course. But I've never been bothered with any nightmares or anything like that. Well, Holder was a pilot during World War II. He served eight years in the Navy. He did go back to Hawaii for the 80th commemoration. He's actually turning 100 years young Sunday. And he has a big celebration planned, which does include a ride in an historic World War II aircraft. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. All right, checking those roads on your Wednesday morning. We're looking pretty good. We're just starting to see the typical slowdowns for this time of day. We do have a crash that is in the clearing stages, but be, be mindful you might see some flashing lights out there on the US 60 westbound right near the 87 Arizona Avenue area. This morning, that view out there, can't see the crash, but you can see we've got a lot of cars out on the US 60 this morning heading west, so just be mindful of that, that you are going to be in very good company out there. But that long drive, if you're starting all the way back at the 202 and working your way to the 10, still just a 20 minute drive this morning. If you're taking the 51 south from the 101 to the mini stack, that's a 15 minute drive as well. Our longest drive time as per usual is the I 10. If you're coming in from the far west valley, we're at 25 minutes, but so far we're still giving it the green light because we don't have any crashes out that way and it's not stop and go traffic just yet coming down the 17 also looking great this morning. 15 minute ride. So fingers crossed we can get through this hump day with a very smooth ride this morning. Now looking ahead to that most accurate forecast. Here's meteorologist Jorge Torres with what you can expect for the rest of the day. Hey Jorge. Hey no, hey good morning everyone. Temperatures at 616 are in the mid 50s here in the valley. We're still keeping an eye on a abundant cloud cover and some very very light shower activity mainly uh, west of the valley in a stretch extending from essentially La Paz County all the way up to the high country where blue indicates some light snow. Uh, right around the Williams and Flagstaff area. Again, a little accumulation anticipated with this particular disturbance. We'll have to wait another day before the next storm. The stronger of the two begins to impact our state, which will also bring with it cooler temperatures. So here's future cast for the rest of your Wednesday. We'll begin to clear out by about midday or so, but temperatures still cooler than yesterday by a couple of degrees. We're calling for highs right around. Uh, we're going to say 72 uh, for the majority of the valley, but beginning tomorrow morning, we start to see that next storm impact the state, uh, mainly to the west over by Lake 
Lake Mead and also by Bullhead City. And then by 10 o'clock in the morning, you see most of that rain beginning to move quickly to the east, impacting areas around the Grand Canyon and also near Page and eventually Flagstaff, where we're talking about snow uh, at the elevation level of 6,000 feet and above that. Below that, we're talking about rain. This does include portions of the I-17 corridor from Camp Verde all the way to Phoenix. And the chance of rain in Phoenix really picks up tomorrow night into early Friday. As far as rainfall amounts in the Phoenix Metro, anywhere from a tenth to a quarter of an inch is possible in the high country, two to five inches of snow above 6,000 feet and much higher in the higher elevations, too close to nine to 10,000 feet too. Now, as far as wind speeds in the valley, they will be breezy to uh, windy at times, gusts of 25 miles per hour, mainly in the evening, stronger in the high country with gusts of 40 miles per hour. As far as rainfall amounts elsewhere across the state, they'll be higher as you head to the east of the valley and areas along the rim and in portions of Gila County. And again, snow, we're talking generally on the lighter side, but a few locations right around two to five inches in places like Flagstaff along the rim and in the White Mountains uh, there near Greer. Sunrise opening up this Friday. It looks like the forecast will pan out for opening day with up to 9 to 13 inches of snow there. Now, as far as Phoenix forecast, we cool down a bit beginning Friday and Saturday with highs in the mid 60s and lows in the 40s. So it'll feel a little more like fall and winter here in the Phoenix Metro and especially in the high country with highs dropping into the 30s by Friday with lows as cold as 9 degrees Saturday morning and those lows staying in the teens and 20s for early next week too. And yes, there is another potential chance for storms next week with another storm on the way. Of course, we'll break it all down for you throughout the next several days, but all eyes are on tomorrow's forecast with a chance of rain in the valley in the evening though at 80%. 619 Uber Eats adding seasonal items to its delivery options. Users can get Christmas trees and wreaths delivered through its seasonal decor store. Right now, this is only available in New York, LA, San Diego, and West Palm Beach. Uber says its holiday hub will continue into the new year and the offerings will change depending on the holiday. No word yet on when or if this could be available here in Arizona. Hmm. It's a good idea. For a lot of people, the holidays mean tamale time, right? And with just a few weeks until Christmas, the Tucson Tamale Factory is beyond busy. Margarine, baking powder, salt, buttermilk, cottage cheese, yellow cheese, white cheese, and uh, green chili. Got a lot going on. Sherry Martin says they're all about the tradition there, and they try sticking to decades-old family recipes. I love when I hear people um, talking about making tamales and carrying on that tradition in their kitchen and with their family and with their kids. I know she'd be really proud of what we're doing. You can buy Tucson Tamale Factory tamales at grocery stores all over the valley there. It's a holiday tradition for so many families. And they are delicious. Well, you can take a journey to a snow-filled Enchanted Island for some holiday fun. Why not? That's what's on your bulletin board this morning. The annual Winter Wonderland Express returns to Enchanted Island Amusement Park. It's in Phoenix. It's happening this weekend. And in addition to the train, kids can play on holiday-themed bounce houses and ride sleds in actual snow. There's also a giant inflatable chair for family pictures. And you can visit the Santa area and get a free cup of hot chocolate and free candy canes. If that's not enough for you, okay, there's more. Elf on the shelf. There's a hunt there for this. And if you find all 10 elves, well, you're gonna be entered to win a free family annual pass. One train ride ticket is 10 bucks, or you can get an unlimited wristband for 25 bucks. Experience all the holiday fun Saturdays and Sundays through December 19th. That's your bulletin board today. Well, harder to find this year ahead at 624, some gifts you won't be able to cross off that Christmas list. Plus, does Instagram cause emotional problems for teenagers? At 636, a preview of today's showdown in Congress. All right, how about some furniture? Have you purchased any new items over the past year? Well, you know, it's a waiting game. So at 645, why the shipping delays are getting even longer for you. And you know big weather changes are coming. At 648, Jorge delivers that most accurate forecast, plus that super seven-day forecast as well. Six twenty-four. finding all the gifts on that Christmas list. If the struggle is real for you, you're not alone. A new survey from digital.com finds 40% of those who started shopping before Black Friday say they haven't been able to find everything they plan to buy. Is that, well, you're an early shopper. Have you found everything? Yes. Okay. Turn to Nick because he, he knows yeah. he's got some great tips. Clothing, electronics, and toys, they top the list of the hard-to-find items. And this survey also shows last-minute shoppers say that they're going to turn to gift cards or cash if they can't find the stuff they want. So in terms of spending, 
38% of shoppers say they're going to increase their budget this year. Hey, hey, now. 22% plan to spend less. Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve adding a new location to ring in 2022. Puerto Rico actress Rosalind Sanchez will be hosting from the island. This will be the first Spanish language countdown on ABC's long running New Year's Eve show. Ryan Seacrest will host from Times Square. You can watch all the fun right here on ABC 15. A release date now set up for the upcoming film about director Steven Spielberg. The Fablemans is loosely based on his own childhood, which was right here in Arizona, went to Arcadia High School. It'll hit theaters next Thanksgiving. Spielberg wrote the script himself with West Side Story screenwriter Tony Kushner. It's good to know that he has a voice in this, right? I mean, it's just, I'm looking forward to it. Epic story yes. it is. Oh, yeah. Okay, so from pop stars to cryptocurrency and the latest variant of COVID-19, these are all the things apparently we've been pronouncing wrong for the past year. The U.S. captioning company putting together the annual list of the most mispronounced words. Here are just a few of them. This one I had no idea what the <laughs> heck it meant. Chugi. It's mm. a term used by Gen Z to mock millennial things that are outdated or no longer trendy. Also, <laughs> Dogecoin, the cryptocurrency, which I would call doggy coin. Okay. Because yeah. the, the icon is a little Shiba Inu doggy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, had, I needed a lesson in that one as well. Uh, Billie Eilish, the singer. Chipotle instead of Chipotle, I guess. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> Omicron, or is it Omicron? I say Omicron. And I say Omicron. Let's call the, the whole debate thing off. From Gilbert, Arizona, Christina Birch. Next at 6.30, Arizona Proud heading to space. Uh, Valley woman about to become an astronaut. The city of Phoenix putting its vaccine mandate on pause. I'll tell you why that is and the impact it could have on thousands of employees. And the CEO of Instagram in the hot seat. Lawmakers on Capitol Hill preparing to find out what the company really knows about its impact on young users. On this Wednesday, we are tracking our next door, meaning rain and snow chances returning to Arizona. And we'll tell you when it'll arrive in detail coming up in your super seven day forecast.